Welcome to Bell Brothers Brewing. Engineers talking about beers. I'm Curtis. I'm Cody. And today we're talking about best beers. Best beers. Mm. <laughs> Get you some. As always, you can head over to our YouTube channel, see the full length videos, and make sure you like and subscribe. We appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, Cody, why are we talking about fest beers today? Because the media schedule said it's time to make fest beers. <laughs> <laughs> really, we're trying to get started right before, uh, you know, Oktoberfest is coming up in late September, early October. Uh, and instead of doing it during that time, we want to get everybody prepped ahead of time to know what they're talking about, to know their fest beers, and then they can go into Oktoberfest knowing what they're talking about. This season was like, is like my favorite season of all time i love late september early october where everybody's jamming on those like german oktoberfest beers like the big oktoberfest giant mug a refreshing clean kind of amber dark the german style fest beer and you're cranking along on it it's just and you keep chugging and chugging and chugging it's great what a great weekend gotta have your das boot das boot in that style in that theme um, we at the Bell Brothers Brewing decided that we wanted to bring together fest beers to get you knowledgeable on the style. Let's bring up the BJCP guidelines and look at what they consider to be a fest beer and talk over what that is officially. All right, so we'll start with overall impression. So a smooth, clean, pale German lager with moderately strong multi flavor and a light hop character. Deftly balances strength and drinkability with a palate impression and finish that encourages drinking. Showcases elegant German malt flavors without becoming too heavy or filling. Man, that just sounds awesome. It does sound good. Uh, it's, a, it's a lager, like every German beer, according to uh, <laughs> BJCP guidelines. Apparently, it's the only thing Germans ever did was make lagers. All right, so overall impression, right? Smooth, clean, pale. Now, that one caught me off guard, right? The pale aspect of fast beer. Because typically when I think about fast beers, especially with like German Oktoberfest, I'm thinking something in that like almost ruby, red, orange, kind of, you know, like dark gold to amber kind of, of color range, right? And something with um, a, a bready, malty. I mean, I talk a little bit about the malt characters there, but like strong malt flavor, which it says in there, is what I would consider to bring into those darker colors. So yeah. what happened here? Well, so we can we can go through two things here. We've got the comments and the history that'll kind of explain what happened here. So we'll start with the comments. <laughs> uh, this style represents the modern German beer served at Oktoberfest. Although it is not solely reserved for Oktoberfest, it can be found at many other fests. And it's sometimes called White Wiesen. It's Weizen? not Wiesen. It's W-I-E-S-N. No. It's not Wizen. It's was mm. Yeah. Meaning Zn. the meadow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Local name for the Oktoberfest festival. Uh, we chose to call this style fest beer. We being BJCP, not us. We don't make these decisions. <laughs> <laughs> fest beer. Since German and E regulations, Oktoberfest beer is a protected appellation for beer produced at large breweries within the Munich city limits for consumption at Oktoberfest. So, you can't call your beer an Oktoberfest beer because they own that. Other countries are not bound by those rules. So many craft breweries in the U.S. produce a beer called Oktoberfest, but is based on the traditional style described in these guidelines as Marzen. Mm. So that would be the switch you're looking for is the American Oktoberfest is usually a Marzen, not a fest beer. Uh, so, so we've been not, we, we haven't been drinking Oktoberfest beers in the United States the whole time. We haven't been drinking modern Oktoberfest beers. <laughs> the history will tell, like, when we get into there, uh, we'll talk about the fact that Marzen was the original Oktoberfest beer and they've just kind of gone away from it over time and transitioned to what is now considered the more modern fest beer that this style describes. The history of the fest beer. Since 1990, the majority of beer served at Oktoberfest in Munich has been this style. Export beer specifically made for the United States is still mainly of the traditional amber style as are US produced interpretations. Holliner first created the golden version in the mid 1970s because they thought the traditional Oktoberfest was too filling. They So they developed a lighter, more drinkable, but still multi version that they wanted to be more poundable. Ah, that's where I get that term. According to the head brewer at Polliner, the actual type of beer served Oktoberfest is set by the Munich City Committee. All right, 
So with that, that tells me almost immediately that what we have in our head, especially, or like what I consider, right, because the United States and what, like historically, right before 1970, so you get that, you know, the later hosen and the old mm -hmm. style, right, is the Marzen, not a fest beer. <laughs> so even though our style, our, our theme for the month is fest beers, really it should be fest beers slash Marzen. Because we're in America. <laughs> Because of America. <laughs> Let's take a left turn here and scroll down. Well, not a left turn, a downturn <laughs> and scroll down to uh, <laughs> Marsons. Now we're in 6A, Marsons. Bye, 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 bye. All right. All right. So then in this case, Let's give the overall impression of what the heck a Marzen is. A Marzen overall impression is an elegant, multi German amber lager with clean, rich, toasty, and bready malt flavor, restrained bitterness, and a dry finish that encourages another drink. The overall malt impression is soft, elegant, and complex with a rich aftertaste that is never cloying or heavy. This one doesn't do that whole real light aspect, light mm -hmm. body, light color. It's not pale, right? We're talking about yeah. amber. We're talking about color. We're bringing richness and fullness. Yeah. We want drinkability, right? Drinkability is still very important in it, in the sense mm -hmm. that like, you have to have that dry finish. You don't want lingering, weird, off flavors. You, want you don't even want a little too bit of much flavor. flavor altogether, I think, is an important right. thing to look at here. Because if there's a lot of flavor, you know, the biggest, most flavorful beers I've ever had, I'm like, okay, give me a half pint of that at most because you can't drink more than a half pint of it. So for this one, we can't have too much flavor. There's, there's got to be that right, got to find that balance between right. good flavor and too much flavor. So aroma is moderate intensity aroma of German malt, typically rich, bready, somewhat toasty with light bread crust notes, clean lager fermentation character, no hop aroma, caramel, Dry, biscuity, or roasted malt aromas are inappropriate. Very light alcohol might be detected, but should never be sharp. Clean, elegant malt richness should be the primary aroma. So appearance, we have an amber orange to deep reddish copper color. Should not be golden. No gold. <laughs> Bright clarity with persistent off-white foam stand. It's uh, exactly what you think of when you think in Oktoberfest. You need a big mug of that nice orangish coppery color with a big foamy white head. I'm excited already. <laughs> Flavors we're looking for, initial malt flavor often suggests sweetness, but finishes moderately dry to dry. Distinctive and complex maltiness often includes a bready, toasty aspect. Hop bitterness is moderate and the hop flavor is low to none because of the German styles. Hop provides sufficient balance to that malty palate. The aftertaste is malty with the same elegant rich malt flavors lingering, but there's no sweetness lingering, obviously. Mm -hmm. Noticeable caramel biscuits, roasted flavors are inappropriate, clean lager fermentation profile. I know it says lager, we're gonna do ale. It's more about clean, right? It's, it's no esters, no phenols. It just wants the malts really to shine through and the yeast to be a backseat. There are a lot of German styles that utilize yeast to build a level of layers of character of flavor and this is very specifically pointing out don't do that this one is all about the malt all right so characteristic examples are about to be murdered words <laughs> these are all german Urgerlichis, <laughs> Ur Salfelder, hacker score original oktoberfest polliner oktoberfest weltenburg kloster anno 1050 i, I think i've seen the polliner oktoberfest <laughs> running around somewhere so we may have to grab one of those when we do our beer review all right, so our vital statistics, we have IBUs 18 to 24, SRM 8 to 17, original gravity 1.0. 054 to 1.06, final gravity 1.010 to 1.014, and ABV 5.8 to 6.3%. I think we understand the margins somewhat, so let's jump over to the recipe. We, we can just call it the B3 American Fest beer. There we go. We'll go with that. Capital F. <laughs> Why do you oh, hate yeah, that? <laughs> Wait, so, Fest Beer, B I E R, there you go. Fest Beer. <laughs> we're <a> confessed Beer. <laughs> Let's go over to the style, right? Make sure that we're, we're at least pointing in the right direction. So, 6A, Marzen, Boom. excellent. Oil time, 60, 75% efficiency. There's our baseline. Let's look at fermentables. Now we're gonna talk malts. Baseline of any good beer, uh, the fermentables. So we typically use Maris Otter. The flavors on that one, I, I find that it imparts like so much more rich, bready notes, right? Like, like it's a good baseline. I agree with you for Maris Otter. I think it's really good when you're trying to make a beer that's got those bready flavors, the malt-focused beers. Or if you're trying to make a uh, double IPA, 
as weird as that sounds, because it just gives you a nice backbone to really build all those hoppy flavors on. I wanted to point out while we're looking at the, the Maris Otter right now, that baked backbone would completely destroy if we were doing like a traditional fest beer, right? Like in, in, by the guidelines. Because I think it kills that light, pale aspect. Um, building that backbone kind of destroys that ability to just like chug a beer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> aromatic Munich. So what is Aromatic Munich? Like, why are you picking Aromatic Munich, Cody? Why, why was this one like specialty malt for, that we're looking for, for here? The, for the American fast beer. Two reasons. One, if you read the flavor here, it says smooth, clean, slightly sweet, rich, intense malty, which is exactly what we're looking for. We need rich, intense malty for this beer. Uh, every time we've used it, I've loved the flavor it gives. It is just so good at doing Doing that lighter bready malty flavors uh, it doesn't go caramel or toffee it just does bready so well and then the other side is color deep golden with orange hues it does it makes a nice amber it gives you that bright orange color that you think of when you think Marzen. Look at this big cup of orange beer. It does well, that perfectly. And you can see it on any typical styles are Bach, Oktoberfest, Marzen's or Belgian styles or any beer needing maltier flavors and aromas. Could you pick any other specialty malt that would match itself to this style any better? No, this is the specialty malt for this beer. <laughs> there is one consideration I was looking at. I was considering some Vienna malt in here. So this is a specialty base malt, rich malty flavor, notes of biscuity, exceptionally clean finish. Characteristics and application, Gold Pills is a superb example of classic malt, less sweet than pale ale malt, rich base that offers complexity and depth with toasted notes at the finish of your classic Vienna Oktoberfest in Marzen. It finishes exceptionally clean and contributes light golden hues. I think that pretty much covers what I was thinking about here, is that you usually can get that bready really strongly, and I think it does give us a more complex malt flavor. Clean and more German. It, mm. It's staying on brand a little more. I was considering using this alongside the Maris Otter, but reading this description, maybe we should go with Gold Pills as our base. So use the Vienna Malt as the base and then build the Munich, uh, aromatic Munich on top of it for the rest of the flavor and aroma. Okay, so think, sure. Let's do it. I, I say go for it. So we'll do the Gold Pills Vienna, yeah. cut the Maris Otter for now. And then I think as long as we put enough aromatic Munich in there, it should push our orange, give us that nice bright orange look. If you look at that, that's an 11.73 SRM versus our range is 8 to 17. So we need that greater aromatic yeah. component to really push our SRM up. That's what I was talking about. Add it another pound of the golden pills. That makes me a little happier. 1.06. Yes, we're on the high end of the original gravity. Yes, SRM's a little bit more. I'm, I'm happy to do 11 pounds because just to kind of pump up a little bit more. I like the SRM at 12. Um, you know, we're 8 to 17, so that's smack in the middle of the range with the aromatic Munich that should be a nice, brightish, orange sort of color. And I think that's right. If we go beefier, it's going to be too thick. So with that, though, let's take a look at our hops. Bittering hops impart no flavors or aromas if you actually boil them for 60 minutes or more because all of the alpha acids, all of the acids and oils are isomerized into bitterness units. Because of the alcohol, I- Go I, a little I, higher on the- I would, yeah, want to go a little higher on the IBUs personally. So there is one thing though I was considering. Having just a little bit of actual hop flavor in here would be good. So I do want to take a German Noble and put it in here, but I'm thinking put it in at like maybe 20 minutes. So it has just enough time to impart a little flavor, but no aroma. So it should burn off any of the aromatics from it. But impart just a little bit of that like background spiciness. Cause it said a little bit of like low to, mo uh, low to none hop flavor. But I think just just a hint of spiciness floating around on top of that bready, malty characteristic will really give it just that little something special to make it pop. No, I agree. What kind of German noble are you thinking? Saz, most likely. Let's go to hot chart because we want to impart spiciness, right? So like we talked about last time, that's that big red bar. Yeah, um, umiline, spicy, herbal European. So if you look, you, what you said, right, Czech Saz, you can see the Czech Saz all the way on the right-hand side. I was thinking of like the German Haltetar, Erzbrecher, right, where you get some of that kind of 50-50. Tetanang, kind of same deal, right? Close to your same check size. Or if you look at the German Haltetar, that one's got like a big, beefy red bar, but it's almost counterbalanced by that same green, right? So there's a lot yeah. of alpha acids, a lot of acids and oils yeah. in there. So I agree. Maybe just just like check size probably is a good call. Let's see if we do one ounce. 29 IBU. I think that's yeah, a little like outside too, the top. Too far. I think 24 was the maximum. Yeah. yeah so IBU. I would say let's pull back on the Citra. So like 0.35 oh, oh, Citra. I forgot to fix that. That's still on the high end. I'm worried that that might get too bitter. 21. That, there we go. That's pretty right in the middle. All right. 0.3. The middle to slightly on the high end because we are looking for a bigger overall. You know, we're starting at the top end of the original gravity. 
Let's, uh, you can do the mash guidelines real quick. We also need to look at water chemistry and pick a yeast. So the mash thickness is uh, one and three fourths of the actual total liquid. The reason you're looking for that is to try to get the enzymes of the enzymatic activity in the grains, enough room to cruise around, but they gotta be close enough that they can actually get to all of the, the different starches and proteins and whatnot that they wanna break down into sugars. Um, the grain temperature, 70 degrees Fahrenheit is typically room temperature. So if you're in generalistically room temperature, it'll help calculate that stuff. Starting temperatures, 172 and we're trying to get down to a target calculation of 152 which is a medium body temperatures for your amylase your enzymes is 148 to about 158 you don't want to go much above 158 otherwise you start to denature a lot more of your enzymes really we try to stay like 154 156 maybe is the hottest for full bodies 152 for medium bodies and 148 for light bodies. That is a question. Do we want to go medium or light body here? We could go 150, split the difference. So go 150 and do like a 75 minute. More fermentables. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So the whole reason, right, we were talking about the, the, the kind of style is dry. And in order to get dry finish, you need to have more fermentables and less residual or complex sugars. That mm -hmm. still gives us a lot of that caramel flavor, or the, the, a lot of the malt flavors, but without giving us the sweetness that it was trying to hesitate. Like the style guideline was like, hey, don't do the sweetness. No We're sweet. not looking for caramel. We're looking yep. to get good malt flavors, breadies, toasties, biscuits, but not impart the sweetness that you're getting from those malts. Now in that, we need something high attenuation. We need something reasonably solid for our yeast. And so we're going to go to our well-known WLP 001 that gives us the clean fermentation and an excellent yield because the California ale yeast just does a great job at kicking butt. And the average attenuation, which is the quality that the ability for it to convert sugars to alcohols is 76.5 percent which means of the fermentable sugars that are hanging out in there on average it'll kick out three quarters of them into alcohol which means we do a great job of getting it in there and we can get a pretty and low final gravity well that's on average i think we can usually get i see usually we get closer to about 80 for our attenuation with wlp 01 all right so um we do have water chemistry for our uh our, our traditional Mars and Oktoberfest that we tried, the, the Intoxicate. Do we want to look, go back and look at that water chemistry and, and put in what we want? Uh, I was actually thinking we should take the Dunkel because you got the Dunkel that we made that's got that little bit of the uh, table salt boost, the uh, clean malty flavors. Right. I think that is perfect for what we're trying to do here. So let's take a look. So here we have Wayward Sun. So I know you just said Dunkel, but why are we looking at Wayward Sun instead? Uh, so I was wrong about what brew water profile was for Dunkel. And I think actually at a later date, we should visit doing the Dunkel with this sort of profile. Well, this the, does the, the table salt anyways. <laughs> the table salt at least, yeah. We don't need everything that's in this one, but at least the table salt. And the one, the one other thing that's really concerning me is lactic acid, because in this, we don't have any dark molds. Um, yep. And and while what we with the aromatic Munich in our baseline of Vienna, there's some color involved in that. It's not truly like the Pilsen malts. So the lactic acid calculation needs to get redone for the other one as well. Take the lactic acid calculation from the Robin of Hopsley because the base malt profile of this one of the Marsden we're working on and Robin of Hopsley are very similar in terms of overall SRM. So we could take that lactic acid measurement and move it over. Let's take this. We'll take this water chemistry and the lactic from the Robin and well, let's bump over and put that into our recipe and we'll finish that up. So you can see our other ingredients. We've done our water chemistry. We've got that matched up to the Wayward Sun and the Robin of Hopsley. Bam, 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 bam. Our B3 American Fest beer is going to be uh, these final numbers. Obviously you can see they're all green. We're right in the neutral realm. I'm liking that ABV at like 6%. That's a nice little strong drinkable, right? Good fast beer. Mm -hmm. Make everybody a little, little cheery, a little rosy in the cheeks. <laughs> everybody will feel nice and festive. Let's move on to the tasting. All right, and we're here. It's time to taste the Marzen. Tasting time. Uh, Woohoo! Yes. Uh, Look so, at it. what you saw in like a blink of an eye took us, what, three weeks? Something like that. And wow, the coloration on this and the carbonation mm -hmm. is just. It's like, perfect. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. I could go a little darker, maybe, you know, some more maybe. copper a little bit. But it's got like, a nice amber. It's got that yeah. orangey amber color. It's It, it feels Oktoberfesty. Yes, it does. Uh, the head, good color mm -hmm. and retention on that, so we must have a good set. What are we smelling, Cody? Mostly bready. There's a hint of maybe a light hoppiness, which is weird because we didn't really do any, there shouldn't be any flavor hop going on here. This is mm. just a bittering hop. Maybe more green apple, so maybe acetaldehyde? Mmm, some acetaldehyde. You know, that might, 
So in the taste, there's like a, a light nuttiness to it and maybe even like a particular sweetness. Well, you definitely have a little malt sweetness here. A little something in the finish. I think it might be a hint of acetaldehyde. Yeah. It's like a green apple-y. I'm also missing a lot of like bready flavors, like that bready toasty we were talking about in the mm -hmm. Marzen. I'm not getting that much from our recipe on this. I think it needs some more, maybe a specialty malt. A little so bit more, more to give us. Yeah. Yeah. Just I think maybe little. the Vienna malt that we use, maybe a little more Vienna, because it's known for being a bready, toasty sort of malt. You think so? So maybe a little more Vienna malt, a little less base malt. I'm thinking maybe like a caramel 10, potentially. Like, mm. or, well, that's more like caramel sweet. It's just it's pure sweet. sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to go back to the drawing board and look at something like that, because mm -hmm. I think this just needs a little bit more of that bready, toasty note. While there's some here, there's some of that brady, some of the sweetness, I think we need something just more to that, maybe the Maris Otter, like a 50-50 split with the Maris Otter. Let's go to the beer. Five-ish, four-ish? Yeah, I'm gonna say it's less than like smooth. I'm gonna say four-ish. Uh, and this four -ish. is the first time one of our B3 experimentals was like truly subpar. But um, yeah, that's where this is. If I yeah. paid for this, I'd be like, I'm a little upset. I'd be upset if I paid for this, yeah. So, uh, which we did. We, we need to go back to the drawing board. That's what happens. All, not all recipes are perfect from the bat, uh, and you go back and retweak and retweak and retweak. We really appreciate it. If you would like and subscribe, it really helps us get our stuff out there. And uh, someday we'd like to be a big channel instead of like five people. That and, uh, you know, share it around, right? If you like the video, throw it up on your social media. Send more people our way. We always appreciate the additional audience. Thanks. Thanks for visiting us here at Bell Brothers Brewing. This has been Engineers talking about beers. Cheers. Cheers.